All right, guys, you bought your first AR-15. You brought it home, and all you want to do is build it. These guns are nice. They're simple in some ways, but then they're complicated in some ways, too. If you're having trouble with the gas block and the gas tube, getting this system aligned on your barrel, I can show you how to do that. Within five minutes, you're going to be a pro at this. My shooters take first, second, third. They dominate the competitions locally around here, and I... Trust me, this is going to be a simple process. No spaghetti, no pipe cleaners bent up, trying to do it, nothing like that. Very simple. I'll show you right now. All right, guys. You guys have been asking about the AR-15. The gas system is kind of a pain in the butt. At the same time, it could be easy. The AR-15 or AR-10 with the direct gas impingement system is going to follow the same principles. It's basically the same thing for the most part. Um, enough you guys can go ahead and start tackling stuff. Don't let it seem like it's a little overwhelming or anything like that. It, it's a very easy setup. When you talk about an AR-15, okay, we talk about a gas system. The gas system, actually, basically, okay, you fire your round, you have your projectile. Your projectile comes up here. Once it hits your gas system, you begin obduration. Obduration is basically pressure built up that flows through the gas system before the projectile leaves the muzzle. When it leaves the muzzle, all your pressure is lost. That's why it's like such a pain in the butt when you have a pistol or when you have something sensitive like a 300 blackout. A pistol, your gas system would stop like right here. So as you fire, you have to achieve all that pressure and back pressure in order to cycle the gun, but then the second it leaves the muzzle, it's done. So you don't really have, it's hard to get that pressure. An adjustable gas block, you can tune it in and that's really what you need for a pistol. 300 Blackout was a different cartridge that's made to work off of a suppressor. So when you have something like that, it takes the back pressures and uses the gas in a different way to get it to cycle differently. For the most part, your 5.56 is very simple. You put it on, you align it, you're good to go. You guys have probably even done this at home. You line the gas block up, make it look like it's straight, and you're good to go. And your gun probably shoots. You might not have ever even noticed. You probably, it's not a big deal. The average shooter who's going to go out and put a hundred rounds in and then take their gun down and clear whatever the case you, you might not even notice something like this but just to show you how it's done is very simple your round fires comes up here your gas system reaches this point when it hits the gas block comes back hits the top of the key on the bcg pushes the bcg back and that begins your four step and your cycle of operations so let me show you how to do that it's easy all right it's a very simple process. We talk about two holes. This is going to be the hole in the barrel, and this is the hole in the gas block. When we align the gas system on the barrel, all we're doing is taking both holes, aligning them straight. This way the gas can flow through it correctly, and we can get all the back pressure we need to cycle our BCG. This is a feeler gauge. I mean, this is just a, a buffer, <laughs> but I'm using it as a feeler gauge. A feeler gauge would usually be a bent piece of pipe cleaner, uh, string, like a, like a metal wire, bailing wire sometimes. A piece of spaghetti could crack off and you would just use it. As the holes align, it would fall through it. So the concept with that seems good. It's a good theory. But what it is, is hypothetically, the diameters are a little bit different than the gas hole system. If it was a perfect equation, it would be fine. In this case, lining up one of the feeler gauges can still make your gas system off. So even though it might be nice or it might be 80% correct, it could still go without being perfect. So we don't want this system to necessarily work here. We want it to be perfect. To do that, you'd have to have the same exact diameter here, but we just don't have that. So I'm going to show you a way to do it at your house using basic, basic stuff. You're going to need a napkin. You're going to need a push rod. And then you're going to need some tape. Those three things we can put a gas system in professionally and 100% correct. I'm going to show you right now. All right, now it's time to line up those two holes. So we have the hole in our gas block, which is going to be right here. That's basically your hole. It's going to be on this side if you've installed your gas tube correctly. Then we're going to have our hole in the barrel. And we just got to align those two holes up. We take our gas block, we put it on. And it's not as simple as just making sure it looks like it's straight because the manufacturers have different ways they do this and they're all gonna be different. You're, you're, you can really build a 5.56 or a 2.23 and have a lot of error and you might not even notice if it's a little tiny bit off. But in pressure sensitive cartridges like a uh, 300 blackout or something like that, you're really gonna to start to see those errors later on. 
First off, we take our little napkin and we tear off a little piece. We make a little plug. And we're going to get this plug somewhere beyond our gas hole. It can be anywhere in that barrel. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to put it in the end of the barrel now. Then we get our rod. As we have the rod, I just want to know what distance I need to push to somewhere beyond that hole. We're going to go about right there. So I push the plug in. And now we have basically a block off here. So as we put low pressure air, which we simply just blow into the barrel, it's going to go in and come out. I use tape because nobody wants to get carbon built up on their mouth. That's kind of gross. Got to keep it sanitary somewhat, you know. <laughs> so as we put pressure through here, we're going to start to see this gas system sound a little differently. When you have your highest velocity, you're going to have those two holes lined up perfectly. It'll be the loudest. As it moves, you're going to start to get lower pressure, better pressure, better pressure. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so here's the gas hole. I'm going to line the gas block on. We're going to put it on. Now listen to what this sounds like as we blow through it. You're going to hear the velocity change. This is going to be closed, obviously, and this is going to be open. When it hits open, it's going to be loud. Then we're going to try and find a range when it closes again. And then we're going to try and find the middle ground where it sounds the best. This is a simple way to do it at home. So again, closed. We're putting pressure by blowing into it and you're not hearing anything. I'm going to continue putting pressure into it. And as, as I turn this, listen. So you want to try and find the good medium range and then get right in the middle of it. I'd say this gas system is perfect. And if you look, it's not 100% perfect. It is a little bit off to the left. That is a perfect gas system. You might not notice it to the naked eye, but that system is as perfect as it's going to get. We'll tune it a little bit more, but that is pretty much a good system. Once you've set this gas block and you know that's 100% where you want it, go ahead and just tighten it up a little bit. As you tighten it up, you're done. I put Loctite, blue Loctite, on the bottom of these of this gas block. Now, if you know for a fact that you're going to keep using this gas block and you're not going to change this gas block, you don't want to hurt the barrel, but you can take and put a witness mark so that you can always forever match these two up. So this is now a gas block truly mated to this barrel. All right, guys. So that's it. We just successfully installed our gas block and our tube and timed it onto our AR-15 upper. So your barrel should be <laughs> just fine. Now, if you don't have the perfect tools to do this, this is definitely something you could do at your house. You could do it at home. I built plenty of these on coffee tables. It's not a big deal. Um, remember, all you're going to need is a napkin, tape, and then a cleaning rod. You have these three things. You could just about 99% get your gas system tuned in at your house. Simple. Easy. Um, all right. Well, we'll see you guys for the next episode. <laughs>